Welcome to the session on specifying groundwater boundary conditions. This presentation is focused on specifying boundary conditions in the groundwater module of the Plaxus LE software. My name is Sean Johnson, and I will be guiding you through the application of boundary conditions in the software today. In this presentation, we will start with an introduction to the various boundary conditions that can be applied and their specific types. We will also talk about specialty conditions in the software and internal boundary conditions that can be applied. We will also discuss how to apply boundary conditions in a three-dimensional numerical model. We are ultimately solving a boundary, boundary value problem when we set up and solve a groundwater seepage numerical model. In a, num in a boundary value problem, we have a partial differential seepage equation, which we will solve out to the extents where the boundary conditions are known. Plaxus LE provides an extensive list of boundary conditions, which can be applied in the numerical model. Generally, the approach is to assign boundary conditions to lines or surfaces in the numerical model, such that they can be applied to nodes automatically at various node densities, which may be changed dynamically in the model. The groundwater seepage model supports both natural and Newman boundary conditions, which are typically specified as boundary conditions where a specific flux occurs at a boundary, or an essential durst led boundary condition where hydraulic head values are applied to the boundaries of the problem. Special boundary conditions also exist, which are a combination of the two above conditions. In terms of which value conditions are available, we have specifically zero flux, flux, head, review boundary, a climate boundary, as well as a gradient boundary condition, as well as specialty boundary conditions, which may be defined. Each of these may be specified in the boundary conditions dialog by clicking, right-clicking on the boundary. The flux boundary condition is util utilized by the user to specify unit flux in or out of the model along a boundary. These boundary conditions are often referred to as Newman boundary conditions in the literature. It's important to note that flux boundaries can be applied as normal to the boundary phase or bio component. It is common to apply a precipitation boundary as a vertical component in the numerical model. It should be also noted that in transient models, a flux boundary condition may often be specified as varying with time. This is because the flux applied to the numerical model can vary with time. It should also be noted that it is possible to specify unrealistically high fluxes, which cannot be readily accepted given the hydraulic connectivity of the underlying soil. Therefore, the user must take care not to specify too high of a flux that will lead to a spike in pore pressures, which would result in convergence issues with the numerical model. A head boundary condition provides a more numerically stable boundary condition which may be entered in terms of total or pressure head. Head boundary conditions can be entered as constant values or as a function of time with transient numerical models. The user may also specify a head boundary condition as a constant or a data table in terms of pressure head. In this Case elevation will be utilized the entry to convert the values of total head and subsequently apply them in the numerical model.
It is also useful in some scenarios to have the user specify a gradient boundary condition. In this boundary condition, the flow out of the model is calculated based on Darcy's law. Hydraulic connectivity is determined based on the unsaturated function and the gradient is considered fixed. Typical applications of this are to specify the gradient as 1.0. A particular non-unitarian gradient can also be specified as a boundary condition. Often these boundary conditions are utilized at the bound, bottom boundary condition of a 1D numerical model, which would mobilize flow vertically. A review boundary condition can be utilized where the user does not know where a water table might daylight. Typical use cases for a review boundary condition is on the downstream side of an earth dam that is holding back a reservoir. The user will not have a distinct idea where the water table may exit the earth dam, but a review boundary condition can iterate and locate the point of exit. You can see that case illustrated on this slide. There are a number of specialty boundary conditions that can be added to a groundwater seepage numerical model. These specialty boundary conditions can either be rivers, tunnels, or wells. Rivers are added to the surface of a numerical model that model the head boundary condition equivalent to a river elevation. River boundary conditions are attached to a series of line segments which are connected on the top surface of a 3D numerical model. The head is considered constant for a river numerical model across all geometric line segments. Tunnels may be utilized to simulate internally a zone where the water table would be pumped down to disallow a tunnel from being filled with water. Tunnels could specify a rate, head, or review by pressure boundary condition. Tunnels may be arbitrarily oriented and can be modeled in two-dimensional or three-dimensional space, which makes them useful internal boundary conditions. It is also useful to know that tunnel boundary conditions can cross multiple material zones seamlessly. The user must therefore be careful when specifying a flux boundary on a tunnel that the hydraulic connectivity will allow such flux rates reasonably. Well boundary conditions are another type of specialty boundary condition that are representative of wells that have been sold out of sight. Wells in the context of groundwater seepage models can be represented as sinks or as sources of pressure gradients. Therefore, the user can specify a specific flux rate ahead or review by pressure boundary condition to the screen depth of the well. The boundary condition is not applied to the outside of the screen depth. A generic internal boundary condition is also provided in the software to further allow flexibility to the end user. The user can geometrically object in a model and specify an internal boundary condition consisting of flux, head, pressure head, or pressure boundary condition. Three D boundary conditions can be applied on surfaces or sidewalls of three-dimensional numerical models. If boundary conditions are applied to the bottom line segment of a layer, then they can be automatically extruded upwards to the next layer as shown in the figures. It should also be known that specialty boundary conditions such as tunnels can be applied to 3D polylines within, within a numerical model. Wells are specialty boundary conditions that can be applied to vertical wells in a numerical model, as shown in the figures. It has, been, <clears throat> it has become of particular importance in recent years how our geotechnical and hydrological systems interact with the climate. 
This feature makes the groundwater software unique in that it implements a rigorous, rigorous calculation of actual evaporation. Actual evaporation is not to be confused with potential evaporation or pan evaporation, which occur from a free water surface. As the soil desaturates, the actual evaporation rate begins to deviate from the potential evaporation rate. These detailed physics are important in the implementation of the groundwater software. The Proxys LE groundwater software is the only software in the world to implement the Quinlan-Wilson-Penman method of estimating evap actual evaporation. Several years of research have been invested to refine the software to model it correctly. In summary, the boundary conditions allow us to specify known points in a numerical model externally or internally. It is noted that the user may want to consider increasing the mesh density around boundary condition, conditions to aid in a model solution accuracy. As you increase mesh, the mesh density, you would expect to increase the accuracy of the result. A wide variety of head and flux boundary conditions can be applied in a numerical model. These include specialty boundary conditions. Furthermore, boundary conditions can be applied as constant for steady state conditions or as data tables for transient conditions. Thank you for listening to this presentation and I hope it's been beneficial for you.